dear friends, brothers and sisters, we are reflecting on some of the tips that help us to pray, how to connect with our God, who is our Father, to speak to Him as a child speaks to a father, and to cry out to Him. Yes, in every moment that we connect with God, because prayer is the connection that every human person links up with God, speaking to Him heart to heart. It is a dialogue. I speak to God and I listen to Him. So, in order to speak to God, so that I can listen to Him very well, there are some tips that guide us in this dialogue with God and with each other. And one of the tips that guide us is to have an intention. Dear friends, whenever I am praying, I am invited to have an intention. For what am I praying for? What is the purpose of what I'm praying for? Yes, whenever I go to pray, I should have that in mind. What am I praying for? For me, for others, for the situation that is happening, good or not good. What am I praying for? That should be very clear even when we go for the Mass in the Eucharist. But even when we go for the liturgy of the hours, the Divine Office, the morning prayer, the prayer of the evening, the prayer during the day, every form of prayer, even a simple prayer, we should have an intention. For what am I praying? When that is clear, then our dialogue with God becomes very beautiful, simple, familiar, like a father speaking to a child, a child speaking to God. And then we shall hear God speaking to us as his children and responding to us, maybe not as we wish, but as he wishes. Maybe not immediately as we want, but as he wishes to to respond to us, maybe not through the people that are around us, the people that we want them to give us the answers, but through the people even whom we do not expect. We'll be able to speak to God and we feel God has listened to our prayer and now it is up to Him to respond to us. We will be able to surrender to God and tell Him if our intention is very, very clear. So my brother, my dear sister, what is your intention every time you pray? to God. Always have an intention, the purpose. Why am I praying? If that is clear, then we are prepared, our hearts are prepared to speak to God, to relate with God, and to allow Him be God, to allow Him respond to us at every time, not at His time, not our time, in His way, not our way. And then the other thing that also guides us, dear friends, is actually having our attention. After the intention, we should have our attention fixed on God and fixed on everything that is around us. And this attention is one of the most beautiful things because it involves the faculties of the body, the faculties of the mind, the heart. The whole body at worship is involved looking at the environment where I am, even when I don't feel like praying, that alone I entrust it to God. Even when it is boring and painful, I entrust all those moments of how my body is reacting to God. How am I using my mind to pray? Whom am I praying for? With the mind it will tell me, where am I? Whom am I praying for? And all those, how is the state of my mind? How is the state of my heart? How is the state of my body? Maybe it is weak. Yes, that weak moment of my body is what I am praying for and I'm offering to God. That weak moment of the mind which is worried about the obesity, whatever the, wherever the mind goes is what I offer to God. The state of my heart, how is my heart? Is, is it joyful? I offer to God and say thank you. Is it painful? I offer to Lord and say help me. So the state of my heart, the st faculties of the body, mind, heart and soul, my body at worship, my whole body from head to toe is at worship and I offer to God every moment of what is happening to me. I surrender it to God and when I pray and see that I'm happy, I pray for all the people who are happy but also for those who are not happy. 
that is prayer the prayer of the church the catholic church is not a, a, a it's not a kind of only private prayer it's not a private prayer it's not a selfish prayer it's a prayer that prays for the whole human race whether i know the people or not so i pray i open up my mind my heart i pour it to god praying for myself but also praying for others we are not selfish. We Catholics are not selfish. We are universal. We embrace everyone. And we pray for everyone. We are concerned about the life of everyone. Those who are rejoicing and those who are suffering. So when I'm happy, I pray for those who are happy, but also for those who are suffering. When I'm sad, I pray for those who are sad like me, but also for those who are rejoicing. In other words, we pray for everyone in every situation, at all times, everywhere. That is involving the whole body. The way the mind goes is where I tell God, help us. The way the heart is, I feel with those who are suffering and I pray for those who are suffering. I feel with those who are rejoicing and I pray for those who are rejoicing. That is prayer. Opening out and pouring out our heart to God. That's what we call heart-to-heart -heart dialogue. Core and core locito. <laughs> in the heart of mine as a human person dialogues with the heart of God. I tell God what is already knows in the heart and God is able to fill me with more consolations, with more answers in his own time, in his own way. If I poured out my heart, so my dear brother, my dear sister, just pour out what is going on in your heart at every moment. At every moment is a moment of prayer. Every moment, always and everywhere, we raise our mind and heart to God. Because that's what prayer is. Prayer is raising our mind and heart to God. Dialoguing, maintaining that connection. Make sure that our connection with the Lord, the Wi-Fi connection of heart to heart with God is constant. That it's not loses. In that case, when I know that in sad moments I pray, in the good moments I pray, then every moment I pray. And that's what the Lord told us, to pray to the Lord at all times, in every place, in good times, in challenging times, in, in, in disappointment, to pray, to raise up our minds and hearts to God at all times. Benedictum Domine in Omni Tempore. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will say well of the Lord at all times. I'll speak well of the Lord at all times. I'll do well to the Lord through doing well to my brothers and sisters at all times. Another aspect of prayer is that of participation. Yes, we are not only spectators in prayer. We are fully, consciously and actively participating in the prayer. I involve my whole self and I make sure that every moment I am involved in praying using my gestures, verbal, non-verbal language. That's why we talked about even the body language. So I use the verbal language, the words, to speak, to cry out to God at all times. I use the words to cry out to God. I use the words to sing the praises of the Lord. I use the words to speak well of God and to speak well of others, my brothers and sisters. I use the words to acknowledge the great things God has done to us because prayer is acknowledging the wonders that God did in the past, that he continues to do today, and that he will continue to do every moment. So I use the words, but also there is the action. The action like the gestures, the kneeling, the standing with all respect. And remember, whenever we kneel, we kneel with the heart. It's an inclination of the heart to acknowledge how we are helpless, how we surrender to God. Kneeling, prostration, standing is a sign of respect, of victory. That's one of the language standing, a sign of victory because we are Christians and because of the resurrection of Christ, we are victorious and we are not crushed down, but we stand and we are part of uh, the victory as Christ, that nothing can crush us even when we are going through challenges.
So the standing position, the kneeling position, the raising of hands at our Father, crying out to Lord so that He can embrace us as His children and pouring out all ourselves to Him so that He can hug us and console us. Crying out to God that like our hands raised to heaven. As our hands are raised to heaven, our hearts are also raised to heaven. So the gestures that speak of prayer are the non-verbal languages that worship in prayer. We need these gestures. We use the body. We use the to participate in liturgy, to participate in praying. My brother, my dear sister, do you use the body? In praying, even when the body is tired, do we cry out to the Lord when even things are not going on well? That is prayer. Prayer is not only when things are okay, everything is sweet, and then we are praying to God. No, even when it's not, I go in the silent corner, I even cry. I can literally cry before the crucifix. I light my candle. If I have some incense, I put there. I put some flowers. Whatever I can put within a second in the small chapel, in the big chapel, under the tree, wherever it is, I put there and I cry out to the Lord. Sometimes I cry out to the Lord, and this brings us to another point. It, I cry out to the Lord, even in the silence of my heart to say, Lord, you know what is going on in my heart. So silence. I mean, it's the noise we need to create that time of silence. Not only when things are not going on well. Of course, when things are going on well as well, that we need to spend every day moments of silence, of meditation, to just be before the Lord in silence, in prayer, in pouring out all our everything to Him. Using the verbal and non-verbal language, using words, using our actions, our gestures, just to cry out to God, and sometimes just to be there and to run away from the noise or to bring the noise into prayer. <laughs> this is the most important thing, brothers and sisters. That in prayer we bring even the noise in prayer. We bring the distractions in prayer. We bring those things that our minds and the hearts are going through into prayer. Prayer is not calculative in the sense that ah, this one I bring in prayer, the other one no. We bring, we tell God everything of what is happening to us. That is prayer. And we just pour it out to him. And our prayer is that of adoration. We adore God for his wonders. Our prayer is that of thanksgiving. We thank God for his gift of life and for the many gifts that we receive, for the many blessings we receive from him. We thank God. Our prayer is that of contrition. We ask for forgiveness from the Lord. Ask for forgiveness and we thank him for the gift of his mercy, his forgiveness. Because it's because we are forgiven and he invites us to forgive others. And the true prayer, if we want our prayers to be asked, we are invited to forgive as the Lord forgives us even more than what others do to us. So, my brother, my dear sister, we want your prayer to be heard. Forgive, forgive. And never get tired of forgiving. Just don't hold anything on your heart. Just fight it. Every day, put it in God and say, Lord, I want to be free. I don't want any situation to hurt me. If others are hurting me, let them hurt me. But me, I am free. I'm with the Lord. I don't mind what they say. They appreciate what I'm doing. Thank God. They don't appreciate it. It's still okay. I have my God. My heart is free. And I, as I continue doing to the good I can do, as I continue also getting close to these people, my prayer is that of supplication, whereby we ask for the intercessions, we just cry out the Lord. That is prayer. Dear friends, do we cry out to the Lord? Do we ask for His forgiveness? Do we adore the Lord? Do we speak well of God? And do we speak well of our brothers and sisters? Because in our brothers and sisters, there is image and likeness of God present in them. When we despise our brothers and sisters, we are despising God. Yes, our brothers and sisters have their own weaknesses and strength as well. That's all true. But we are invited to work with them, to walk with them, to help them also overcome their difficulties. And it takes time, especially if we be patient with them. And just entrust everything and say, Lord, help us to work out with everything with our brothers and sisters to help them be good, to be free at heart, my dear brother, my dear sister. A true prayer is that which makes me free in my heart, within. 
I'm at peace with myself, with God, and with others. And I can be at peace with God, with myself, and with others when I have of, of, I've also been able to reconcile, especially through the sacrament of reconciliation, forgiveness, confession. That's one thing which makes prayer more beautiful and we become blessings for others because we are at peace with ourselves and with others, with God. Because we cannot give what we do not have. You want to be a blessing for others every moment of our lives. We have to be always be at peace. To be at peace. To forgive constantly. May the Lord bless you, my brother, my dear sister, as we continue getting close to Him every moment of our lives. And one way to get close to God is by being close to our brothers and sisters. And that's what prayer is all about. Prayer brings us closer to God. It brings us closer to others and brings us closer to ourselves. And we have to make sure that we do not lose that close connection with God, with others, with ourselves. Because that is where our true meaning in life is found. May the Almighty God bless you, dear friends. As we greet you from Israel, this is one of the moments of what is happening here <laughs> during this war time. And it reminds us also to continue praying for the end of war, the end of tension in our hearts, the end of war in our different places. And uh, this is the best gift that prayer can bring peace we all need peace when there is peace we can face anything that comes even the most difficult realities of life where there is no peace there is no freedom there is no life let's continue praying for peace so that we may share that peace that joy that gift beautiful gift that christ himself left us because he knew that with peace we can face every situation and without peace we can't face any situations my brother my dear sister be peaceful be a peacemaker wherever you are because this is what will bring life and meaning to all our brothers and sisters and to ourselves and that's what will bring us even closer to god and to each other and to ourselves at the end of time god bless you once again from jerusalem